All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, rest of the day here, we're going to talk about angles. Still talking about angles, but angle bisectors, all right? And again, that word bisector. What did that mean the other day? Cut in half, cut in two equal parts. Um, so we're talking bisectors. So you're going to see something like this. If the ray XZ is an angle bisector or XZ bisects, it will form two angles, all right? So what we want to do is name those two angles. Well, here's XZ. It split WXY in half, so the two congruent angles would be angle WXZ and ZXY, or YXZ, okay? So it's splitting them in half. And like segments, we talked about if I'm going to show congruent angles or they're the same length, we use tick marks for segments. Our angle tick marks will look something like this, or sometimes they might have tick marks on those slashes. Okay, anytime we see those in the corner of angles, that means congruent. So what we got here is FG bisects EFH. So really, we have two, two different types of problems we gotta look for. Are they giving me parts, a part and a whole, or are they giving me the part and the part? And depending on the information they give you, we'll determine which way we're gonna do it, and we'll show you examples of both, right? So FG bisects EFH, so that means this angle and this angle are the same. And those two are the parts, right? So it gives me GFH is one half 10X minus 20, that's a part, because that's this guy down here. And it gives me EFG, which is, if we follow the lines, EFG is this angle, that's the other part. So in this equation, they give me the two parts. Well, since it says bisect, what do I know about those two parts? Those two parts are going to be the exact same measurement. So if they give me part and a part, you're gonna put them equal to each other. All right, now let's just go through and solve, distribute that half, or what it's gonna do, it's gonna take half of those, so 5x minus 10 is equal to 3x plus 25, okay? Um, subtract 3x to both sides, because they're on opposite sides of that equal sign, right? So I can't just combine them together, and I get, oh, that's an ugly looking, I don't wanna confuse that, that's a three, so 2x minus 10 equals 25, add 10, divide by two, and we get 17.5. That's okay, to get decimals, that's okay. Now we have to do and find GFH. Well, we go back up to GFH, and it gave us measure of GFH was equal to one half 10X minus 20. So what we would do for this is measure of GFH, and that was equal to one half 10X minus 20. And then we would take our value of 17.5 and plug that in. Do the math, and you get 77.5 degrees. Now, if you trust yourself, Okay, what should EFG be? And it should be the same thing, right? Because in the directions, it said bisected. So when I go back and check my answers, they should make sense. It should be 77.5. So we can just double check. EFG was three times 17.5 plus 25. When you do that math, you're gonna get 77.5 degrees as well. Done, Ski. And then now EFH is the whole, add those two values together and you get 155 degrees. Again, it's just those two, these two values added together. All right, now here's the extra credit problem. Uh, IFE, okay, so I'm gonna erase some of this stuff over here. IFE is this guy right here. That's the one we're finding. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this idea and concept that IFH is what type of angle? Great, it's a straight angle, and that's 180 degrees, and we're taking that into two parts. I don't know IFE, 
but I do know EFH from before is 155 degrees. This whole thing is 155. So to find out IFE, we're going to take the straight angle, which is 180, minus the 155, and we get 25 degrees. All right. Um, one thing that should be on here in the directions that I accidentally deleted is EF bisects angle DEG. Okay. And what I like to do when pictures aren't there is to draw one so you know exactly what you're looking at. Okay. Because EF is bisecting DEG, that makes DEG the whole angle. That's D, E, and G. EF bisects, so we're going to draw in EF. Bam. What that does, it splits it up into two equal halves. And then we have to figure out, oh, and that's F out here. Okay, so we got to figure out, is this parts and holes or what? D, E, F. D, E, F is a part. D, E, G, D to E to G is the whole darn thing. That's the whole. So we have to use the concept of part plus part equals whole. Now in this case, the, the thing that's a little difficult is they only give me one part in one whole. We have to use the idea of that word bisects, which means cut in half. So if D, E, F was 3X plus 1 degrees... And this guy down here is going to be the same exact measure. They're congruent. They're the same measure. So really what we're going to do is we're going to add those together and, and set it equal to the whole or really double it. So 3x plus 1 turns into 6x plus 2, and that's going to equal the whole of 5x plus 19. All right? So that's different than this one up here where they gave me the two parts and I was able to set them equal to each other versus this one here where they gave me one part, one whole, double the part, equal to the whole. And then we can solve. It just says find the value of x. So once we solve, we're good. The x's are on opposite sides. So that's x plus 2 equals 19. Subtract 2. And we get me not able to scroll. Just what is going on here? It won't let me select my eraser. Oh, well. And then we get x is equal to 17. Not sure why this is acting up on me. I'm hoping it, it'll last here and I can scroll down. I don't know if something's on my screen right now or what, but. All right, let's close out a notability quick and then reopen notability. See if this works. If this don't work, I don't know what's going to happen here. All right, we're back. So x is equal to 17. All right, give the figure below, find out all this information. Well, what did they give me? They give me those darn tick marks right here. What do those tick marks mean? Means congruent. Means congruent. They're the same thing. Means that so x, y, m is going to equal m, y, z, or this is a part and this is a part. We're going to do and set the parts equal to each other. So we're going to do 4x plus 6 equals 7x minus 12. Subtract the 4x because on opposite sides of the equal sign. 3x minus 12. Add the 12. We get 3x is equal to 18. Divide by 3, x is equal to 6. So we found out one-fourth of what it was asking us. x, y, z, it says, is the whole. So let's why don't we go through and find out x, y, m. x, y, m is 4x plus 6. So we're going to do 4 times... 6 plus 6, and get 30 degrees. Okay, and then we have MYZ is 7X measure of MYZ 
is 7x minus 12. And holy cow, I hope we better get 30 degrees when we do this, because if we don't, we did something wrong, because the directions in the directions, it said that because of the tick marks, those two angles were the same. So when I go back and plug in my x value, they better be the same darn number. If they're not, ay ay ay, we got to go back to the drawing board. So now we have three of the four things done. We found out x, we found out the two smaller angles, and then now we have part plus part equals whole. We could say the measure of angle x, y, z is the culmination of both of those angles added together. 30 plus 30 is 60 degrees. Okay, so you got two parts to work on. You have part one if you're not done yet, and then part two. Um, when you're setting up part two, you have to look, is it giving you um, the two parts where we set them equal to each other, like we did for the example two here, but the first example we did and the third example we did? Or do they give you a part and a whole where then you have to double the part, set it equal to the whole? So we took, in this case, again, we took that 3x plus 1, said there's two of them, added them together, 6x plus 2 became what we used. So you have to be able to make that determination yourself to set up those problems, okay? So good luck. Please reach out to myself, Ms. Tesh, or Ms. Dedeker. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, we would love to help you guys out. Have a good day.